Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rex Gatto, and this afternoon I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts about mentoring and creating a competitive edge through mentoring. You may have some questions as to what is mentoring and how does mentoring differ from coaching and how can we create a competitive edge through mentoring the next generation of leaders and the next generation of employees. Over the next few minutes, those are the questions that I would like to share and address with you. If you take a moment and uh, look at some of the key points that I have here, competitive edge through coaching. First, we want to talk about the opening lines of communication. Mentoring is the more experienced person working with a less experienced person. By communication and sharing thoughts and ideas of how to effectively enhance your skills with your mentor, you're opening lines of communication. And that can help you to better understand the ideas and perceptions of the person, your mentee, their thoughts, and what you can do to help them to become more effective. It's also important that you retain key people. You know, a lot of my clients say, we want to retain our employees at any cost. And I say to them, you don't want any employees, you want the right employees. So the question about mentoring is, how do we retain the right employees? And how do we continue within the organization that culture that you want? And you may say, culture, what is a culture? Culture is values and traditions and standards that you have rewarded over the past 5, 10, 15, 20 years. If you think of a culture, every family has a culture. Every ethnic or ethnocentricity has a culture. And within organizations, because of values, because things that are rewarded, and the standards and traditions that have been upheld in your organization, that creates a culture. We look at what you can do to create a greater success, to develop future leaders. One of the things that I'd like to make sure that you focus on is how you are helping others to develop and to better understand themselves. Mentoring does open up lines of communication because mentoring creates that safe haven where someone can go and discuss their career or a better way to work with somebody or admit to you, I didn't do this right. But you can help them to say the next time you do it, try this or what was the lesson learned or what's one thing that you'll do differently next time. Now let's delve into what is coaching and or mentoring. If you take a moment here and you look about the philosophy of this, and it is that it is a developmental process. Coaching is not evaluative. It is developmental. It is a way for you to help people to understand how they can develop their skills, how they can develop who they are, and help them to enhance their skills so that they can take on a wider scope of responsibility within the organization. Wider scope of responsibility says you are promotable. A mentor's job is to help a person become promotable, to take on that wider scope of responsibility. Now, what is the difference between mentoring and coaching? Mentoring. Mentoring helps somebody understand the philosophy, business acumen. It is big picture. It's understanding how to better work with clients or your customers, how to better work with people within your organization. It's a wide spectrum, but it's a philosophy. How to win and lose the game. The coach teaches you how to play a specific position. The coach teaches you how to play second base on the girls' softball team or the boys' baseball team. So the difference is a mentor looks at the philosophy of how to win and lose the game and the philosophy of playing the game. Translated into business. Marketing. The philosophy and strategizing of your organization. The leadership strategy that you are utilizing, mentoring. Client presentation, how to do a specific job, coaching. Yes, there's overlap, but I like to make a distinction between mentoring and coaching, mostly because the words are used synonymously, 
they both are developmental, but there is a subtle difference. The coach is on the field helping the person play a position. The mentor is in the stand helping them to understand the philosophy of the game. So keep that in mind. And today we use a lot of the executive coach or the manager coach. But I want you to understand that anybody can be a mentor or a coach within your organization. So let's talk about why a coach or, or why a mentor. Let's take a look at staff needs. Well, a couple of the key things that I would like to address here. How do we develop the people skills? If we take a look at leadership, there is a dynamic of two key skills in leadership. One is the people side, and the other is the competence of knowing the job, being able to do the work. There is a balance between both. The balance, the people skills, the team building, building a consensus, inspiring people, being able to effectively communicate, getting to know the person, not just the position. Leadership, being able and competent to perform the work, get the work done, be productive, efficient, on-time delivery of work product. The other is, as you work with people, you will motivate them. Remember, you want to retain the right people in your organization, and it is a way to motivate. Another word for motivation is effort. How do you help people have effort? Why do people want and desire to put out effort in your organization? And that's some of the things that each of you have to talk about. And think how are you a role model for those people in putting out effort? Now, one of the key things when we talk about mentoring is identifying the right mentor. And I've had some critical key points that I would like all of you to take to heart. And the very first one is, if you are going to be a mentor, you must have a vested interest in the mentee. A vested interest in their success. A vested interest in helping them to develop. A vested interest in wanting them to succeed. And you have to make it comfortable for them. So you have to be approachable. You have to be a person who welcomes them and talks with them. Monthly, a cup of coffee, a lunch, the end of a day coffee. Just sitting down and talking. Your job is to listen, not to judge. You're not an evaluator but you are an experienced person sharing insight and philosophy, sharing ways of working and helping that person to develop. I had a professor that said, wisdom is sharing your knowledge lovingly. And his point is if you are truly a wise person, that you take the time to share with, with comfort and compassion your wisdom, in other words, your experience, and the years that you have developed your ideas, that you share those ideas. And that's how you open up those lines of communication that I talked about earlier. Also building a trusting relationship. How do you build trust? What you say equals what you do. You can build trusting relationships by following through and saying, this is what I want to do, this is how I would like you to do it, and follow through. Actions equal the words. If we take a look at that, you might what is the impact? You might think, what is the impact of coaching? And what is the process? So I've outlined some key things for you. First, every organization needs to develop future leaders. You develop future leaders by outlining the role models that you want them to become, the leaders that are presently there. The loudest communication in your organization is the last person promoted in your organization because that promotion says this is what we want this is what we stand for this is what we value and this is what we want you to become when you promote somebody you are promoting the future of your organization so you're promoting future leaders you are guiding the less experienced and giving them wisdom and guidance and experience through your eyes you help them to think about strategy. And once we do that, we get into the competitive edge and why the competitive edge through mentoring is so powerful. Mentoring